This video talks about Kyazanov theorem. Throughout the video, we assume that risks are diffusive, meaning asset prices cannot change abruptly, but only smoothly. Now, Kyazanov theorem states the following. If, first, B is a vector of independent Brownian motions under the empirical probability measure P, and if second, the radon Nicodym derivative C, defined as dq over dp, is a strictly positive P martingale, with dx over xc being equal to minus lambda transpose dB, where lambda is the vector of expected market prices of risk, and if third, q is a risk-neutral probability measure, then Gesanov's theorem states that BTQ, meaning a vector of independent risk-neutral Brownian motions, is defined to be BT, which are the physical Brownian motions, plus the integral from 0 to t lambda s ds. Or in differential form, it says that dBTQ is defined to be dBT plus lambda T dt. Yeah, so it tells you that if you want to change from one probability measure to the other, and if these two probability measures stand for the physical measure and for the risk-neutral pricing measure, then the way to change from one to the other is by that Gesanov theorem. So you have to adjust for the market price of risk. Now let's look at one example. And I want to show you the most famous example for Gesanov theorem. The example shows you that a stock return with an expected return mu, which is larger than the risk-free rate r, under the empirical probability measure P can be restated as a stochastic process with expected return R under the risk-neutral probability measure Q. So we start to write down the dynamic of the stock return under the empirical probability measure P. Here's what it looks like. ds over s equals mu dt, so the mu is our conditional expected return and then we have the sum from i equals 1 to n sigma i dbi so we have n sources of risk and sigma i is the volatility for each source of risk dbi is the Brownian increment for each source of risk now suppose our goal is to rewrite that dynamic under the risk-neutral probability measure Q. Now, note that the distance between dBQ and dB is characterized by the market price of risk vector. How do we know? That's from Gesanov theorem. So notation-wise, it means Gesanov theorem tells us that dBQ minus dp has to equal lambda t dt. So hence, we just take the p representation of the e to sde for the stock return and rewrite that under the risk-neutral probability measure. Here's how we do that. We simply swap db with the expression dbq minus lambda dt. And we do that for all n shocks. Therefore, the respective relationship is that ds over s equals mu dt plus the sum i1 to n sigma i times dbq it minus lambda it dt. Now we take the drift part, lambda it dt, into the front. So we therefore see that ds over s equals mu minus the sum of all sigma i's times lambda it's 
times dt plus our shocks, now the sum from i equals 1 to n, of sigma i db iq. Now notice here that the drift part mu minus the sum of x anti expected risk premiums per unit of systematic risk times the amount of systematic risk is nothing else than the risk free rate. Hence, we just rewrite the last equation as ds over s equals r dt plus the sum from i equals 1 to n sigma i times dbi q. So as a summary, we can state that if the conditional empirical distribution of stock returns is given by a Gaussian distribution with expectation mu dt and variance sigma square dt, then the conditional risk neutral q distribution for the stock return will be also Gaussian with an expectation of r dt and the variance of sigma square dt. And again, why does that hold? Because of Gersanov theorem, which tells us how to change from one probability measure to the other. And in that video here, we focused on diffusive risk.